Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can use the PyTorch YOLO V3 model library to train your own object detection model on a custom data set. Now, the model library that RoboFlow maintains is completely free to use and has a wide array of different object detection models that you can use. RoboFlow is a tool for managing your extract transform load process of getting all your images, annotations, and data set ready for doing computer vision with it. So things like making sure that you can convert annotation formats from VOC XML to TF record files, that you have balanced classes, that your annotations aren't incorrect, that you can generate more training data using augmentation, reduce overfitting with augmentation, pre-process your images. All that stuff that happens before you actually train your model is what you do with RoboFlow. Now after that is when you would come to the model library. And the model library has free implementations to grab any of these and train one of those models. Today, the model that we're gonna be training is the PyTorch YOLO V3 implementation. So uh, maybe I should tell you how to get to the model library. It's available in docs.roboflow.ai. And if you scroll down on the docs homepage, you'll see uh, at the bottom of the page, model library, you click that, and we're right back to where I started. So uh, as I said, we're gonna use the YOLO V3 PyTorch implementation. So I'm gonna click this link and it opens a Google Colab notebook. Um, the first thing that I recommend doing is saving a copy in your drive. So it copies this notebook and then renaming it. So mine says copy of, I'm just gonna call it JN because that's like my initials and that makes sense. Okay. now. Um, what do I want to show you? So in this example, um, I'm going to walk through training a chess object detection model. Uh, and the data set that I'm going to use is available publicly on public.roboflow.ai. So on public.roboflow.ai, I have the ability to tap into all these public data sets. This chess data set is 289 images, uh, and there's specifically a download already generated here of a bunch of chess um, uh, images. If I look at the data set health check to get a bit of a better idea what's in here, 289 images, approximately 10 annotations per image, which means roughly there were 10 pieces in each of these images if we're gonna teach our model to recognize various chess pieces. The class balances are a little wonky, but maybe we'd expect that. We have a lot more pawns than we do kings and queens. All of our images are of the same size. They're a little bit wide. That matters because we need square images for the model we're gonna use. YOLO V3 expects squares and multiples of 32. So we're gonna to happen to use 416. And the last thing I can see is that my uh, pieces are generally moved around pretty well with the exception of a few things. Like I noticed actually that white king is all clustered in this part of the image. That might be bad. I don't wanna train my model if the king is always in that part of the image, but we can collect more data later. The point is I have a free data set that I can use to show you in this collab notebook. Okay, so what is in this Colab notebook? Well, this Colab notebook is actually building on the shoulders of giants. RoboFlow built on top of a company called Ultralytics, which is a consultancy that has a YOLO V3 implementation. Now, one thing that that tutorial doesn't cover very well is training to a custom data set. And so that's exactly what this walkthrough is for, is training to a custom data set. I should note, we are using only free resources, so sometimes you get what you're paid for. And by that I mean Google Colab gives you free GPU with some exceptions. You get whatever GPU is available at that given time, which sometimes isn't enough memory, to be honest. Um, you only get 12 hours of compute time, and it times out after 45 minutes. Now, don't quote me on those numbers. They're often changing, but that's generally what tests have shown. So it's free, but it comes with some restrictions. Now. Uh, a little bit more about the model. So YOLO V3, so YOLO, you only look once, is a single shot object detection model. Contrast that with a, a, a two shot learner or two shot model, like faster RCNN, where it takes an image and it passes through the network twice in a sense. The first, way, the first time it's identifying regions of interest uh, and then it's classifying those regions of interest. So it's a bit more accurate, right? Because you can imagine, mm, which parts of the image matter? Okay, what's in that part of the image? That takes a bit more time, and the model's way bigger. So it's a little bit more accurate, but at the cost of a bigger model and more time. 
Yolo v3, on the other hand, is built on Yolo, as you can imagine, the third, third version of it, um, with incremental improvements. And it instead is a single shot learner, and it looks at an image once. Basically, it divides an image into grids and thinks about which part of that grid contains content of interest, and then creates the bounding box. In doing so, it's much quicker, uh, and it's a much smaller model, which is why it's very favored for mobile applications, for example, because phones might not have the most compute power. Um, and so having a small model size that can run quickly and on device matters. Um, now, there's some drawbacks. YOLO doesn't do well with small objects in frame, um, and it's certainly not the most accurate ever, but generally the costs outweigh the benefits when uh, you're building for mobile for now, until there's another new model, right? So that's about the architecture. Now, the next thing is that this is using PyTorch, so we can dive right in and, and get in ready. So the first thing we're gonna do is import PyTorch. We're gonna make a clone of this GitHub repository uh, from, from Roboflow. Feel free to open this up and leave an issue if you have a problem with it. Uh, we cite directly to Ultralytics, so be sure to look at Ultralytics to see if they answered your issue. Now, here's the key thing. Getting data from Roboflow. This is where things um, get easy and, and kind of special, really. So instead of just having to figure out how to get the data where you want it, you get all your data formatted in Roboflow and then just pipe it to the model that you want to train. That's what we're here for. Now, the data set that we're going to use, as I mentioned for my example, is the chess public data set. When I export that data set, there's a series of different options. So there's this download version, I want that 416, 416 auto orient, I have this download. Now, there's a series of different types of options that I want. If I look at the notebook, the notebook calls for YOLO v3 darknet as the export type. So sure enough, YOLO v3 darknet. And I'm gonna show the download code because I wanna paste the download code here. Notice that it says replace this link with your own. Not only do I need to replace that link with my own, but I also wanna keep that hidden from you. And you want to keep your link hidden from others as well, because that contains unique information about your RoboFlow account, like an API key. So uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to scroll up and put it out of frame. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to move this to my other monitor over here so you can't see it. And I'm going to create that export to show download code. Uh, and then I'm going to copy that first URL that pops up. I'm going to expand my window and drop it in. I'm going to run the cell. And mine failed to write body, which happens sometimes when you use the first link. So try using the second link if that ever happens to you. So I'm going to grab the second link of the download code. I'm going to run that second link. Now that does run successfully. Um, I'm gonna delete out the sensitive information and scroll down so now you can see what I'm doing. So because I ran it twice, there's some files that has to overwrite on top of itself. I'm gonna say A, overwrite all of them. Those are the same images. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna CD, we're now, now the data's in the notebook. So now the question is how do we get the data formatted appropriately such that it's in the Ultralytics implementation to run through the model properly. So the way that I'm gonna do that is basically move images and files around. I'm gonna CD into my train folder that I see over here. CD in there, list its contents, show you that everything's there. Make a directory for labels and images. Move everything that ends in JPEG to the images folder. Everything that ends in text, I'm gonna move to the labels folder. I'm gonna CD into the images directory. And I'm gonna create a specific set of file paths that Ultralytics expects. And those file paths look just like this, where it's just a, a string that describes the location from where the script is gonna to run to the name of the file. So it's over in train. So relative to Yolo v3, you can see it goes up, over to train, inside train, inside images, and image name. And that's exactly what we see here. Now I actually need to do the same thing for valid. So I'm gonna CD on over to valid, Make a directory for images, make a directory for labels, move all JPEGs to images, all text files to labels, seed into images, and create those file paths again. It's the same exact thing, just this time invalid. Okay, 
those are all created. Now I need to set up my model configuration. So this tells the Ultralytics YOLO v3 implementation. It says, hey, look for the data files here and look for the weights here and save everything here. So it's almost like a control panel, an instruction manual for the model. So we're going to CD into data. Now, darknet labels, this is what we downloaded from RoboFlow, the darknet labels file, which has the 12 different classes that I'm interested in. And I'm going to overwrite that on top of RoboFlowData.names because the implementation that we're using expects a .names file. Now I'm going to create a uh, function that identifies the number of classes and then writes that number of classes directly into the configuration file. Now why did I write a function to find the number of classes instead of just write 12? I know that there's 12 classes here. But I'm doing a chess problem. The answer is because I want this to work for non-chess problems too. You might work on a problem with your custom data set that's only six classes. So having this little function that counts the number of classes and then writes it correctly means it'll work on your data set without a whole lot of second thought. You're welcome. Now, I'm going to show you the contents of that data file. Class is equal 12, train to the train folder, names to here. I'm going to see down over to YOLO. And OK, so now when I train, I should know, I should be aware that um, you see, every time I train, I get all the epics and they spit out their respective performance. Uh, and I've had those 300 epics. And um, now I'm actually not going to run that right now because I want to go through the notebook with the saved output to show you. You see, as the model gets better and better and better, as it trains more and more, MAP gets really high, 0 0.978. Um, and the recall is finding generally everything there. And that took about you know an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, and so I don't want to run that right now. Uh, I just want to show you that output. So if I scroll down, I could see you could run those cells. And you would see similarly, but you have to wait the time for it to train. You'd see recall gets much better. MAP gets much better. And then we could conduct inference and actually display our results. So we'd run detect using the weights that we just trained. The source is going to be our test file. And the names are going to be the row of all data names file. And then we'd print those out right inside our notebook. Simple. And the last thing is saving our weights. Uh, we can save our weights so that we can train more effectively and efficiently the next time. So that's really the gist. Some things to be wary of is RoboFlow, or excuse me, is that Colab is resource dependent. Again, sometimes the memory isn't enough to support these notebooks, and you should consider upgrading to RoboFlow or to, to Colab Pro. Similarly, if you have a data set that's bigger than a gigabyte or a few hundred images, you might exceed the RoboFlow free cap, and so you need to upgrade your plan to be able to have more images or work with a smaller data set. Um, that's, that's really kind of it. So that's how to use the PyTorch YOLO v3 implementation. The key thing is that when you run, when you use your specific data set, when you use your specific data set, is that the download type is YOLO v3 darknet. And then grab the second download snippet, and that's kind of it. Um, as always, uh, you can write us, help at roboflow.ai, uh, and we're excited to see what you build. Thanks.